One day, I was talking to a friend of mine about my hobby, and he said, it's very, very geeky, but it's very, very cool. It can only be radio controlled helicopters. Welcome to the heli shed. In part six, we're gonna go from this to this. Quick update for you. Uh, bottom line up front, I've put washers on. Uh, when I re-looked back at part four, where we were putting the frame together in that glorious ceremony with uh, the tail boom, I uh, looked at the video, I looked at the helicopter, and to be perfectly honest with you, I was not happy that screws that I had used that were not uh, button head screws, where there is a flange and therefore more pressure on the uh, insertion point onto the carbon frame, I felt that the round-headed alum screws just did not provide the right sort of support, really, um, and was focusing the torque of the screw in too much of a smaller area um, where um, there was very little tolerance between that and the edge of the screw. So um, irrelevant whether it was in the manual or not, I decided to put washers on. Um, I also decided to replace some uh, uh, some screws with longer ones. The rear tail boom, for example, I replaced those with 16 millimetre uh, screws. Um, and these washers here, these are set washers, so these alum screws are um, sitting inside that washer rather than on top of it. Um, I replaced them here, 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 and here. Uh, the rear boom brace, uh, rear boom brace, the rear frame brace, I just put a stainless steel washer on. I put a set washer on the front here, um, and uh, these these two for the for the rear motor mount brace. I was content with that because it's in the frame brace here or the motor ma uh, motor brace. So I was content with that. So essentially, wherever there was not a button head collar screw, I used a washer. Heli shed, and it's been two days since I last used a washer. Washers provide that additional support, spreads the load of the torque as you apply it um, to a wider area, in this case, um, on the frame, and that's what you want. You don't want too much torque being centralised to just the width of the screw as you screw it in. Or there is a chance that, in my view, that um, you know, frame could come apart. And it's not going to come apart just because it's in a hover, but it just certainly doesn't fill you with any form of security. And so I replaced it with the washers. And I refer back to something that I said in part uh, two and three and four, and that is that, look, this is your helicopter. Just because it's not in a manual doesn't mean to say you shouldn't do it. Um, and, um, you know, I feel much safer that the washers are in place and that there is much more, um, you know, the, the helicopter is much more secure. And you are certainly able to apply a little bit more torque when, the, when that torque is spread over a wider area by the use of the washer. Take 20. I've just caught myself doing a 25 minute monologue on a one way bearing, how it works um, and the rotor head. Um, and here's the thing, the rotor head has got a swash plate and that's wizardry. You know, I'm, you know what I think of a swash plate, I think they're marvellous. Everyone should have a swash plate in their life. Um, where this is wizardry, this is witchcraft. Simple as that. Um, it's, it's a main gear and we can see that here. And on the underside, you've got a one-way bearing which allows it to only go one way and this moves independent to this main gear. And this means that if the motor stops working, that the, or that the bottom gear here is still able to spin, and that bottom gear meshes with the bottom umbrella gear on the tail, and it means that we're able to auto-rotate or bring the helicopter to a safe landing without the use of the motor. Bang, that's it. That's your explanation of a, a one-way bearing. Um, 
But the key thing about the one-way bearing when it comes to fitting it is that it is two independent pieces of wizardry. Oh no, not wizardry, um, witchcraft. Two individual pieces of witchcraft, which means that there is a sleeve inside uh, an inner and an outer. Um, now, why do we need to know that? We need to know that because at the bottom here is a bolt, and that is another Jesus bolt. And as we know, that's got the whole world in his hands. So we've got to make sure that this Jesus bolt goes through the out through the auto rotation gear through the sleeve on the inside which is part of the main gear through the main shaft and out the other side six separate sides and three separate holes so now we know that it's absolutely vital that we employ a simple rule and that is that at the bottom where the jesus bolt is that hole is never ever not filled when we put this one-way bearing on, we always make sure that we've got something in that hole. Well, if you need any help filling it, your hole, that is, give me a bell. Now, I think 32 minutes down to 2 minutes and 35 or whatever isn't bad cutting. Um, look, I could go on and on about a one-way bearing like many other people have, have done out there on the tube of you and drawn out every last ounce of charisma that I once had when I was learning about one-way bearings. Uh, here's my advice. Uh, it is witchcraft. Comply with the simple rules of making sure you've always got something in that hole when you're fitting it, um, and learn about it afterwards. Um, um, I'm not gonna go for a video of putting this together. Um, it's pretty much put it together once and leave it alone. It's not the sort of stripped down and service uh, item. It's a perishable item along with this main gear and you should probably replace it in accordance with how often you fly what that is i don't know how long's a piece of string i mean i'm not going to re replace a main gear just because i've had 10 flights but if you are a stick banger it's likely that you've probably put this main gear through a hell of a life and uh, you would indeed replace it much more regularly so this is the road head assembly mated with the main gear here and the Jesus bolt gone all the way through at the bottom. Um, and obviously this is gonna be encapsulated in the frame. I mean, you know, this is no good to anybody as it is, is it? But this is just to show you what's going on. At the bottom here points to note where the Jesus bolt goes through. And that is that on one side, uh, there is a very clear round circle inset where the head of the bolt goes through and on the other side it is hexagonal shaped in order to for you to be able to seat the nylock nut in so don't get both of those round the wrong way and make sure you orientate that as you put it in um, but that's essentially what we've got to do is we've got to put this main shaft through the bearing blocks and then seat it into the one way into the main gear um, at the bottom uh, but at the same time, of course, remembering we've got three holes to deal with. The outer hole, the inner hole, and the main shaft hole. So we're always going to make sure that there is something in those holes. On the rotor head assembly, uh, it's important to note that we fit a spacer, as we can see here. Um, this, for me, is 0.5 of a millimetre. But every helicopter is different, um, and they go all the way down to 0.3 of a millimetre. Um, when you buy a kit brand new, it comes with a spacer, which I believe is one millimetre. Um, and you can buy different bit, uh, spacer packs um, that gives you different sizes um, for different tolerances. Um, and the reason for that is quite simple. Not only have we got the main shaft, but we've got all of these bearings and the bearing blocks. And ultimately, there's going to be minute errors um, in, in, uh, in, in width and height and so on with these uh, in the, these four different areas, the shaft, where the flange is, and these bearing blocks. Um, so it's important we use a spacer because uh, if we don't, then there is a good chance 
that whilst we will very clearly be able to line up the holes and put our Jesus bolt through, um, we will induce slop, as in up and down slop. And we don't want up and down slop like that. If you've got up and down slop like that on a radio controlled helicopter, that's gonna induce huge amounts of vibrations very, very quickly. That will um, overwhelm the fly barless unit if you're using a fly barless unit, and it will just simply crash into the ground on its own accord. So we use a spacer to make sure that as close as we possibly can to perfect, that the whole of our main shaft is lined up perfectly when there is maximum amount of pressure on the top of the head uh, through the holes in the main gear. Um, because uh, otherwise we're gonna have slop. And as we know, slop is not good. Fitting the main rotor head is simple. We're going to make sure we've got the right spacer on. As I said, for me, through trial and error, and you will have to do the same, um, for me, it's point, uh, point 0.5 of a millimetre. Um, we're going to apply some, some oil uh, along the main shaft. Grease that baby up. Um, and we're going to simply pop our main shaft all the way down. Noting that, of course, we've got our spacer there sitting on the top block. We're just going to orientate the swash plate so that the, uh, uh, the, it is facing the right way. And we're gonna drop that all the way down. And that, ro that rotor head now is seated as far down as it can go. The flange won't go any further down. It's sitting on top of the spacer. Um, that's as far as it can go. Next step, fitting the main gear. Now we're gonna fit the main gear now, and you'll note that I've got a hex driver going all the way through both of those uh, those holes on the inner and outer sleeve, so that you know they are they remain aligned. Um, and I've made sure the hex driver has gone through the side where it is a very clear uh, cut circular hole, which will take the head of the Jesus bolt. And on the other side, I can see that it's very clearly um, an Allen shaped uh, Allen shaped a uh, hex shaped where the nylock nut will go. Um, hopefully the camera angle will allow you to see me lift uh, the main shaft and put the gear in place. Now what you're aiming for is that clunk there where the main shaft has gone all the way through the bearing blocks and has gone into the main gear and is now sitting on top of that hex driver. Um, if I turn the hex driver, then sure enough, the motor head will turn and so will the motor now and the tail is also turning. Uh, that hex driver is keeping the, uh, the, uh, the main gear, the auto rotation gear and the main shaft synchronized. And what we don't want to do is take this hex driver out. If we take this hex driver out and start spinning things, nothing's holding it together, and then we will come across all sorts of alignment problems. So keep that hex driver in there. Now, when you're going through this to determine the right spacer size, now is not the time to make that assessment because the hex driver is significantly uh, uh, smaller in diameter than the Jesus bolt. The only way that you're gonna get a true measurement is by putting the Jesus bolt in. And what you're looking for is you're looking for the uh, alignment of the main gear to the pinion and the auto rotation gear to the umbrella gear on the front drive. And you're looking for perfect alignment, essentially. The auto rotation gear should meet perfectly, um, exactly level the uh, or the uh, the umbrella gear, uh, yeah, the auto rotation gear should meet exactly level the the umbrella gear. So this gear here should be perfectly aligned to the umbrella gear at the bottom here, and the 
uh, amount of gap to the main gear is minute, you know, less than a millimeter, I think, and it just spins over the top of that umbrella gear. On the other side, you're looking for the main gear to be perfectly meshed with the pinion um, and for the pinion to be slightly lower than um, the main gear. And when I say slightly lower, I'm talking a millimeter or so lower. So to in order that there is perfect meshing between the motor and the main gear. Um, if any of those conditions are not met, then you have the wrong spacer installed. Um, and therefore you will have to either go up a size or down a size. But the key thing is that you do not make that assessment until you have got the Jesus bolt all the way through, because the Jesus bolt will ensure that uh, all the holes are perfectly aligned. At the minute, you know, that is just stopping it from losing uh, the, the whole alignment, but it is not perfectly seated. So how do we now get this bolt into there and not lose alignment? Well, the first thing is you need to understand and remember that the hole on the main shaft is at 90 degrees to the rotor head. So turn the rotor head so that it is facing nose to tail. And it is very likely by doing that that you will already be perfectly aligned, providing, as I've shown you, you put the main gear in at 90 degrees and the hex driver is at 90 degrees to the rotor head assembly. And if we then slowly withdraw the hex driver and under control lower the rotor head assembly in the main shaft further, we should then see all three holes line up and we can then pop our Jesus bolt in. Let's give it a go. To ensure that we are able to actually put that Jesus bolt in um, and not lose the alignment, etc., we come in from the other side with another hex driver um, and we simply push the hex driver we've already got in out the other side and that way that will free the hole this side for us to be able to put the Jesus head in and of course this will then maintain alignment. So let's do that. There we go. So uh, now I'm able to see this side, which sadly you can't see, but now I'm able to see this side and I can see that the uh, the hex driver is all the way through and I can now use uh, the hex driver um, with the Jesus bolt in to do, guess what? Push it back through the other side once I've taken the hex driver out and lowered the main gear of uh, the main shaft to make sure that uh, to see the holes align. So uh, let's do that. So the main shaft is now perfectly seated onto the top bearing uh, with the spacer in between onto the flange. Um, and the, the main shaft is going all the way through the main gear, through the auto rotation gear, and all three holes are now aligned um, and secured via the use of a, you know, a hex driver. Now, um, we can put our Jesus bolt in. But before we do, we put our glasses on. I wonder why I couldn't see anything. Um, and then we give it another go. Um, we're going to put our Jesus bolt on the end of our hex driver. Top tip for you is to use a neodymium magnet and put that on the side of the uh, hex driver. That will keep that bolt from, from falling off uh, where it would have done before because these are not uh, magnetised. Um, so let's put this Jesus bolt through. And once you've got that bolt in, push it very firmly home. Don't be afraid to give it some oomph. You need to make sure that Jesus bolt is going all the way through um, and is, um, abs is taken up completely the space provided by the hole. Um, you also need to make sure, of course, that, um, that, that, that they are aligned properly. I mean, they're not gonna go, it's not gonna go through if they're not aligned properly, but you, you must make sure you give it some welly, pushing it through there to make sure that it's aligned. Now, you can make the assessment as to whether that spacer was any good. So, 
uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, Yep, that's perfectly aligned on this side. I'm very happy with that. Um, and the main gear is above the main gear is above the auto rotation uh, gear on, uh, gear on the um, the front drive, and the main gear is perfectly meshed with the motor. And indeed, there is I'd say probably about a millimeter or so below the main gear. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, the last thing we need to do before we put the nut on the other side is see whether there's any slop. There shouldn't be, because the Jesus bolt is firmly through um, and the alignment is right, but let's just see. Yeah, there's absolutely no slop there whatsoever. But don't think that um, you're gonna come to that, um, or don't expect, um, to be able to come to that straight away. Inspect, remember, expect and inspect. Don't expect, inspect. Um, you may have to use a bigger spacer. You may have to use a smaller spacer. There are plenty of spacer sizes and guess what? You can buy them all individually. You'll have to find what the right spacer is for you. On a previous 700, I didn't need to use a spacer at all. Um, and on another machine, I had to use 1.2 millimeters worth of spacer. On this one, it's 0.5 millimeters. So, uh, so yeah, so good. All we need to do now is put the bolt on and I'll save you the video of that. Uh, there we go, that is the Jesus bolt seated. Um, it's in through the main gear and the, uh, the collars, through the main shaft and secured the other side with our Nardock nut. And now everything turns as it should. Very happy with that. And that is exactly what you want to see there. Um, when it is all secured like this, you should be able to turn the main rotor head and the bottom auto rotation drive is the one that should be turning, not the main gear. The main gear will turn them both, as we can see here. The motor, in this case, goes anti-clockwise to turn both of the main gear and the auto rotation gear. Uh, final thing I'll say on this before we uh, just finish off, and that is that this is a hybrid machine. I've mentioned that before. It's a 730L V2 frame. It's got 700, uh, sorry, um, a 700L V2 frame. It's got 700X mechanics. Um, it's got 700X electronics. It's got 700 bits of 700E at the end. Um, but if you are going to use uh, 700x mechanics and therefore drive you must make sure the ratios are correct otherwise in the event of a motor failure your auto rotation uh, gear is not going to be synchronized with your main rotor gear in other words your rotor blades are going to be spinning around and ultimately the ratio to the tail is not going to be correct um, for the 700X, the auto rotation gear, I believe, should be 102 teeth, and that should be written at the bottom of the auto rotation gear. So make sure you fit the right auto rotation gear in your one way in your one way bearing uh, setup for, for your um, for your drive. Great. Right. I'm going to finish off the rest very simply um, by attaching now the uh, the swash plate to the blade grips. Swash plate to the um, to the servo arms here, the control arms. Make sure that's at the back. That goes on there. Pushed on. That goes on here. Pushed on, and at the back here, that is going to be loctited into there. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're now completed. Um, we've got our our head on. I've loctited in the elevator. Um, that holds in the control rod to the elevator servo here. That's all been done. The, uh, the control rods are all set up, uh, already connected. Um, and when you turn the rotor head now, it should be nice and smooth. You should hear the drive go into the back there. And when you push it the other way via the motor, you shouldn't hear any, yeah, you should feel resistance. 
but it should feel clean. There should be no clanking about. That clanking you can hear, by the way, is the rear blade grips. Uh, the collars are still in. I've taken them out here because they were clanking about. Um, so, yeah, just do that as a check. Remember, check, 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 check once again, and check finally another time. But I'm happy with that. Um, I would fly that now as it is, and indeed, in a couple of days, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing with this. Um, so there we go. That is that. Now, in part seven, we're going to be uh, fitting the rest of the electronics. I'm not going to teach you about the fly barless unit and how to set that up. I'm not going to teach you about the ESC and how to set that up. I'm not going to teach you how to set the servos up, etc. But I will run through how you ensure mechanical zero degrees before I move into electronic fine tuning. Great, right, well, join me in part seven. Uh, well, we'll then be um, fitting the electronics to this um, and wiring it all up and basically uh, making sure that it is ready to go and ready to fly.